Well, hello again, episode 14. Lovely to have you here. And if it's your first time here, well, an even uh, even bigger hello. And uh, I hope you've got time to catch up on, on all the past episodes. We'll see. No, I'm going to start that all again. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. Well, hello, episode 14. Can you believe? I, now, I can't say can you believe it. I've said that before. Well, hello. Nice to see you again. Uh, episode 14, and we'll see how it goes. I never know at the beginning quite how it's going to pan out or what I'm going to call it or anything. I just, oops, now I've got, a, now I've got a message. Honestly, it's one of those mornings. Okay, lovely. Yeah, um, so my name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband Pete and my five chickens. And he's just gone up to check on them because it's been wild and windy. And I'm hoping they're all all right. One of them's pecking one of the others. She's trying to be the top chicken. And um, because uh, Light Sussex was losing her feathers, she was the top chicken and she was the kindliest old maid there was. But um, this other one has decided, oh, while you're losing your feathers, I think I'll, I'll, I'll become top chicken. So she started to peck. They just pull the feathers out very gently. It's not too bad, but you can't have it. So I'm keeping my eye firmly on them. There's more to having chickens than uh, just collecting their eggs. Anyway, I love them. But I'm sad not to be able to be sitting out there with them, um, as I have been. It's been really nice. So we'll see how this episode develops, shall we? I never quite know. It's always just a little bit by the seat of my pants because it's just a conversation. I don't, you know, obviously I've got things in mind I'm going to talk about, but that's the joy of it. I can go wherever I want. I'm my own boss and I hope you enjoy listening too. I'm getting some lovely messages back. Thank you. So what are we going to do? What I've thought that I might do is show you... I had my scarf to put on because I thought I might be a bit drafty and actually I'm feeling it so I'm just going to put it round my shoulders oh yep he's coming back he's going to tell me he'll come in and tell me he knows I'm doing this but it doesn't make any difference anyway and I need a cushion that's it oh that's better that's better are we there are you sitting comfortably then I'll begin. Um, I was telling you what we were going to do, right. What I've got in mind is to show you a couple of quilts that I made a long time ago and why I'm showing you the difference about them. I've had some messages back that people have uh, thought, oh yes, I might get my uh, quilting stuff out again and start quilting again. And also I've had messages that would quite like to see how you do it. So that's all for the future. I will think about just showing you piece by piece, slowly by slowly, how you might make something. I've got here, oh, Pete was very naughty. He, he, he's a great one for using biros and never clicking it back. So on the edge of my settee that we sit on doing our chin wags, um, I've got a little bit of biro. So I cover it up with this. <laughs> Uh, I've got several, I made several. They're so easy to make. That, you sew that bit on, that bit on, that bit on, that bit on, and so you go, so you go, until you've built it up to the size you want. So you only need small scraps. This is a little, um... oh, it's a... yeah, anyway. And then a little bit of quilting, so it's, and then the edging. So it's just like making a quilt. If you made that bigger, it would be a quilt, wouldn't it? Um, so, shall I show you piece by piece how to make that? I'll get myself organised. The trouble is, you see, as you know, I haven't got all these fancy cameras because, I mean, I didn't know if I was going to keep this up, if I was going to have enough viewers or anything like that. But people have been asking, so... I might do that. So it's how to do it without overhead cameras and all of that. 
but I'll fa fathom that out and then maybe I'll just show you how to make a placemat. That might be handy. The other thing is, oh, I've, I've done what my friends call comma, comma. Um, I start talking and instead of finishing that sentence or that paragraph, i.e. telling you what this episode's going to be all about, I do a comma, comma because I go off on a tangent. Yeah, that reminds me of a little talk Pete gave once. He was supposed to say, we can go off on a tangent. But he sometimes gets his words mixed muddled and he said, we can go off on a tandem and the whole audience laughed. <laughs> you can imagine going off on a tandem is a little bit different to going off on a tangent. Anyway, those days are over. He doesn't give those little talks anymore. He threw in the towel. Um, so that's for the future. I'll bear it in mind. And I'll show you how to make it. If I get messages back that you'd like to see, I mean, you might know or you might not be interested. I don't know till you tell me. But I have had a message from Anne in Ireland. Uh, we call her Anne in Ireland. I mean, she's my, she never used to be in Ireland. She was Anne in England because uh, we grew up together. Uh, she's 10 years older than me and she's just written her memoirs and they've been published, as you know. And boy, are they a success. And she's put them on Audible. It's unbelievable. And what a beautiful voice to listen to. What an accomplishment. So that's made me think. Do you remember? I started out right at... The, oh, we're doing more comma commas. I started out on episode one or two of saying I might read you my book. And um, because I wrote a book in 2000... And, when was it? 2003. And um, because I've been doing these reminiscences with mum, I've realised that quite a bit of the early bits wrong because they weren't my memories. I was just putting them down. And now mum's filled in the gaps. I can sort of rewrite the beginning. So I'm going to rewrite the first chapter. And then I might read you a little bit if you're interested. I mean, there's no copyright, is there? So a friend of mine's messaged me back today, Heather, you know, does the poems. Absolutely, I was thinking of it myself. So there's something else I can do. You see, I'm not short of ideas. And uh, Anne said, could I tell her about any little presents she might be able to make? Well, that's quite a hard thing to do because I don't know your skills. I know you said you'd knitted. I think it was a hat. People always like hats, don't they? But there is this. I've made quite a few of them. And they've all gone down very, very well. Of course, I haven't got them because I know, as is the way, I give them away. But I do have one left. And it's not quite the same. But here it is. And what fits in there perfectly is a credit card. And I love just popping that in my bag so light Popping my credit card in there, just in case if I'm out, I want to pop in a shop and get something. And that is made with EPP. Can you see? The hexy, the hexes, the hexes. And then just on the front, if you can see there, it's a, a half hexy. That bit there and that bit there. I put little beads round. Now, if you go to Ashmead, I'm going to put the link below because I know I can do that now. If you go to Ashmead, they sell a kit and they sell a kit as to they supply all the fabric, all the, you know, hexagons. And I didn't make this with Ashmead. I made all my others with Ashmead. So they come up a little bit plumper because Ashmead makes it. The This hasn't got any middle. It's, um, I made that with papers and just took the papers out. And if you, if you have a look, you'll see they come up a little bit bigger in Ashmead. I think they use a bigger size hexi, which would be easier for you if it's your first thing. And then you might see how you go. You've got the kit, you've got everything there and you've got the instructions. That's a nice little present. The other thing I saw I think it was on, I think it was on Cool Crafting, but 
well, all it was was a sweet little box that you could get from Etsy or anywhere about that deep and they'd made out of Liberty fabric well you could make it out of any fabric cut out a heart shape two heart shapes fill it with lavender or something like that and sew round very easy to do and you've made and they put the two little hearts in a box and you've got a nice little lavender to put in somebody's knicker drawer so that's quite something something nice I did that for Pete but I didn't use lavender I used sandalwood and I sent off to House of Alistair um, in or if I can find a link I'll put it down below House of Alistair and I think he's in Tottenham somewhere but that is beautiful a lovely bag of sandalwood comes and that's nice for the men's drawers too so that's a little thought or a set of placemats but if you're a beginner really one would be quite an accomplishment never mind a set but there's some ideas let me know comments below I love Please write some comments if you can and also thumbs up and subscribe if you if you haven't already done so. I've had some new subscribers this week. It honestly I can't tell you it spurs me on. I better crack on I'll be here for 2 hours. This is what can happen with me. So let me show you a quilt. Now this is one of my early quilts. I can't find my first one Heather. She asked me to show you the first quilt I ever made and I can remember I can remember when I was at that class she came around with a lovely basket and she said choose four fat quarters now let me explain what a fat quarter is comma comma so imagine that's a meter of fabric or a yard we do everything in well it's crazy you have to buy it in meters but we do everything in inches so imagine that's a meter right well, if you ask for a quarter of a metre, they're going to cut it down there. You don't get that much, really, if it's a nice design, do you? Because that would be a quarter, that would be a half, that would be three quarters, and that would be a whole metre. So in the quilting world, they sell it in fat quarters, which means they cut it in quarters that way. And so you get more of the design because it goes along to the half but it's only a, yeah, it's only a quarter of the whole metre and that's what a fat quarter is. So my teacher said, she had a basket and she said choose four fat quarters and we'll start there and that's what we did. We made a quilt and I can remember the first piece of fabric I ever bought was this one. I can remember choosing it and the thrill. Oh, it was so exciting. And, oh, that's gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, and what? Anyway, this is one I made in the early days. And as you know, we always put a label on it and I made it for my daughter, my daughter Nicola. And, but she's a childminder and she's got loads of kids running around and she says, oh, mum, this is special. Could you keep it at your house? So I'm glad to have it here. I've called it Be My Baby. It says hand pieced and hand quilted using Lois's dress fabrics with love from mum, July 2000. So that's when I made it. And that's what we do in the crafting world. We put on a label. And so I made this. What we do if we've got squares. Now that's one square. And they've all got names. That's one square. There's another. There's another. 
I'm hoping you can see them, yeah. It's four down and three across. Recognise this one? Storm at sea. I've made a whole bed quilt just out of that design. It's the one I start with when I teach people. Um, yeah, I've made a whole bed quilt. So you can imagine when you put another square the same, you create a square of white here. And that gives you a lot of opportunity for quilting in that square. Of course, when it's just a 12 inch square, not keen on that one. Oh, round the garden path, that's called. And I used um, Lois's dress fabrics um, because I'd made her a dress with this little elephant one. And I'd made her a dress with this little bunny one. And I'd made her some rompers out of this teddy one. And so all the all the dresses that I'd made for or rompers that I'd made for her, I incorporated into the quilt. I'll stand up and show you. It's quite effective, isn't it? So, I was going to show you another one, but I'll do that next week. Otherwise, we'll be running way over time. So, I'm going to just nip off and replenish my cup of tea. And uh, Well, it isn't tea. Well, it's, it's called... Um, I'm not very keen on herbal teas or fruit teas or anything like that. But this one is turmeric chai, and it is gorgeous really gorgeous so I'm just going to go and replenish that because chatting a bit and I'll come back and I'll do the fascinating fact I'll see you in a minute I'm back and I must um say I'm sorry but the the microphone's here and uh, I don't think it was I've put it on a flat base now and because uh, I heard it jiggling jiggling so yeah um I hope it doesn't jiggle jiggle now. I won't touch the table. <laughs> and also I have, I've tightened it all up. So hopefully this will be all right. So I'm going to talk to you about spiders because shall I tell you why? While I was down with the chickens, um, the day before yesterday, I think, I walked, I was checking their electric fence and I walked right into a massive spider's web. And when I came back, I had this spider's web all over me on my onesie and it was like all sticky and it was amazing and that got me thinking and I was just looking up spiders webs and I came across these fascinating facts. Um, spiders, well we've had several spiders in the garden and the little pictures I'm going to put up is of the, I think it's a, a wolf spider Pete said and it didn't move for days and then I think it died because it was guarding its babies uh, in this nest. I'll shut, I've got it up, you'll see it. And also, what other spider? Oh yes, it said spiders can lay eggs in the autumn and then in the spring they hatch out and the spider, and they make these little, and I've put, I'll put that up, this little web all around it. But the thing is, 
There's this man-made fibre called Kevlar and it's a tough fibre and they make bulletproof vests with it and, um, it, you know, they make all sorts of things with it. It's a tough man-made fibre. But the trouble is it takes very high temperatures and hazardous solvents. Whereas the spider, they produce this silk and actually spiders are milked for their silk and it's not to the detriment, you know, and it's very, it's beautiful. I mean, we just think of silkworms, don't we? But they, they milk the spiders and, um, and then they let it go back and rest. Anyway, it's quite fascinating to read up about it all. But spiders produce this silk and it's the sturdiest and it's known as dragline silk. And it's lighter than cotton, yet ounce for ounce, it's stronger than steel and tougher than Kevlar. Now, if you enlarge the spider's web to the size of a football pitch, I know that takes some imagination, but a jumbo jet, would it would stop it. It's that strong. It wouldn't be able to go through it. So ounce for ounce, it's stronger than steel and tougher than Kevlar. Now, spiders produce dragline silk at room temperature, not these hot temperatures. And also, they use water as a solvent. They don't need these hazardous solvents. So what scientists are trying to do is copy what the spiders do naturally because they can see the benefit of it. The trouble is the spiders produce it from inside their body and it's very hard for the scientists to mimic this. So here again, nature at its best. So that's my fascinating fact for this week. So now we're on to TA and that'll be this episode sorted. And we're going to talk about child. Now, do you remember parent was thought, thoughts, feelings and behaviours copied from childhood. But with child, it's thoughts, feelings and behaviours replayed from childhood. So when we're in adult and grown up, it's as if we're replaying our childhood when we get into child. Again, we've got positive and negative, and I'll explain. And again, there are different parts of child. So the one I'll start with, I call it adapted and rebellious. But some people, when they do uh, TA, they just call it adapted because they do adapted, positive and negative. But I call it adapted and some people do, of course, I was taught like this. Adapted, adapted child and rebellious child. I'll start with adapted child. It's quite easy. Here she is, or he is. A nice little guys. Yeah, they do as they're told, basically. They've worked out that if they do as they're told, life is better for them. If they do what mum says, yeah life's better. Uh, yeah, if they do, they adapt. They adapt to the parent. They fathom what the parent wants and they do it. Simple as. They adapt to the parent. Let me get my notes, just make sure I'm not missing anything out. Yeah, so they're polite to neighbours. They use a hanky if they need to wipe their nose. I worked out that my dad wanted me to be quiet. When he came home from work, if the children were quiet, life was happy. He had a quiet little time. Mum always said, oh, dad is coming home. Be quiet. So I did. I was. Yeah, I worked out. I maybe didn't realise I was working out, but that's what I did. I adapted to what my parents wanted. Now, as a grown-up, I might replay that and I might fit in with what other people want. 
Yeah. So if I come across, remember that controlling parent, you should or you walk must. But in my adult state, in my grown up state, I mean, I might think, oh, yeah, I should. Oh, yeah, I ought to. I'd be terribly naughty if I didn't. But those are outdated ways of thinking, feeling and behaving. They're outdated. Why? Because I'm a grown up now. I can think for myself. I can think if I want to, should or must. I can think if it's suitable. But if I go straight into child, I do, yeah, oh, okay, I will. Can you see that? So I'm in answer to that controlling parent, the adapted child. We also have the rebellious child. And this is the best thing I can see. This is what I found for rebellious child. Yeah, you can see what I'm getting at. So when controlling parent or when my parent figures, my grown up that were around me said, you should or must, I said, shan't. Simple as that. Not going to. No. It's interesting. We often laugh because Pete's what I call my default system. It's what he just goes naturally to it. Shan't. He can't help himself, even if he wants to. The first thing he says is shan't. He was asleep last night. And he was watching a program and I was knitting away and I knew he wanted to watch it. So I just gently said, Pete, you're asleep. Your eyes are closed. Your mouth's open. And his head was like that. And he promptly opened his eyes and said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I thought, yes, you were. You can't just say, oh, thanks for waking me up. Yes, I was. No, no, I wasn't. I said, but your head was on one side. He said, do you know what he said? I was looking over there. I mean, how ridiculous is that? It's just his natural default system. And you know, when I first met him, I really loved that about him. I thought, I wish I could do that because this was me. Yeah, I said, okay, will do. Oh, sorry, I'd have said if somebody woke me up. Oh, sorry, silly me. Can you see that? Adapted child, rebellious child. Now, he might feel a little bit stronger in, in rebellious child, and that's what I always thought. And with clients, when, if they realised they were an adapted child, and then they changed, and they came in, and they said, I said, shan't. Well, really, it, they weren't any better because, let me get parent, because they're still in answer to parent. You should, you ought, you must. Oh, yes, I will. You should, you ought, you must. Oh, no, I won't. They're not thinking for themselves. Can you see that? There's another part to child as well. There's free child. I'm going to get in free child this afternoon after doing this. I've already got it planned. I'm going out for a long walk along the sea because finally it's stopped raining. Yeah, I want to. Have I got the time? Yes. Have I got the resources? Yes. Will it do me good? Yes. I'm getting into my free child. I might go for a paddle even if I fancy it free child and it's what we all need to get into choosing for ourselves to be in that childlike state however free child has got a negative too I call it the legless free child because do you know what that's when I might go out I might go to a party how fun how lovely but then I overstep the mark and I get a little bit you know I go too far. So that's when free child goes a bit too far. I might decide to go out for a walk along the sea. I've got the resources. I've got the time and I'm going to get into free child. But if I decide to strip off and dive in just because I can and I want to, I could go too far. So this is the free child we want to be. This is the child we want to get into in our adult state. As my grown-up state, I want to employ this child. 
But I need to recognize when I'm in this one. I need to recognize when I'm in this one, when I'm in this one, or when I'm in this one. And this is the one I want to be. Just enjoy myself because I can. So that's the child ego state. So I'll leave it there with child and I hope you can identify your thoughts, feelings and behaviours maybe when you were in child. So I'm going to wrap it up here and I'm going to pop over to Mum's and um, I'll see you after that. I hope you enjoy Mum's reminiscing. Well, hello. Hello. Hello again. Well, we're going to have a little chat. We've got our cup of tea today. And um, so we'll be slurping as we do. Well, not mum, but I will be. But anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about your granddad, who was your mum's dad. dad yeah, yes. and that line. So yes. we talked about Annie Jemima, didn't we? Yes. Your mum's female line. Yes. And now we're just going to say a little bit about the male line. And we've talked a bit about Henry, mum. Do you remember? He was... Working as a tallow melter. Man, yes. yes. And how awful that was. It was. Yes. Pleasant Grove. And, yes. all, and that's where your mum yes. was born. Yes. And that's the little area in between Euston and King's Cross. And um, what's the other one? St Pancras. Yeah. Uh, and I think you mentioned Fleet Street, didn't you, in, in part of it? Uh, Fleet Street is, I've got a picture of Fleet Street. Now, when you think about it, it's not too far away, no, is it, Fleet no. Street from, from St Pancras? No. And that's a photo that I found of the year Mum was born. And we know it is the year you were born, Mum, 1926, yes. um, because there was a play released in 1926 and it's got the advert for the play on the bus. But what is the chap doing? Well, yeah, it's a bit unbelievable, really, isn't it? Yeah, to think they were delivering. He was driving, driving, yeah, sheep, yeah, in in the middle of London. Yeah, a flock of yeah, sheep. A flock of sheep. And, and Pete's dad, um, we call him Pop. Uh, he remembers Tottenham High Road, the the, the sheep being driven down to, Tottenham, Tottenham High, High Road. Road. So yes. you know, it, we're not talking about no. We're talking about times of change, yes. Mum. In your lifetime, yes. how things have changed. Exactly. So yes. in your granddad's lifetime, even more because he was a tallow melter. Yes. And but then we saw on the censuses, he lost his wife unfortunately early. You know your nan. Yes. But um, he moved out of that area right by King's Cross and he moved Canterbury Great. Avenue. Yes. Well, not Canterbury Avenue, that's where you yes. you live, yes. but Canterbury In, that way. Yes. So, it, it, although it isn't, you can walk to King's Cross from yes. Canterbury, really, can't you, Mum? But it's far enough out. And completely different sort of area. Oh, it was, it, Canterbury was a lovely, lovely area. Yeah. Lovely. I, you know, from my childhood, it was really, it, it was, uh, people were very kind and helpful and they probably were more in the city, but the, it was a busy, a much busier life in the city. Yeah, yeah. And, Canterbury was lovely. It was just a lovely yes. place to grow yes. up for you. It was. It was. And yes. you told me that you used to take babies for a walk out in the pram. Yes. And uh, and that was only a few minutes walk, but it was a lovely walk from Canterbury Avenue yeah. to Canterbury Square. We used to collect the dirty washing, and Mum used to do all that, launder all the products she'd collect from one of the big houses in Canterbury Square. And then we would take it back another day, washed and ironed, and probably catch, collect some more. It may have only been once a week. I can't remember now how yeah. often we did it, but we did it quite regularly. Yeah. And how much would you get for taking a baby for a walk? I would get probably... Some people would give me a halfpenny and others a penny, which was quite... Quite good. A, a nice to buy yeah. some sweet sweeties and yeah. 
yes, it was lovely, lovely. And sometimes I would just say that my mother was a great saver. She had a, a tin that she used to put money in for rent and insurance and different things. And that really taught me to save. And I would often save it to buy something, a doll or something special. Yeah. For me. Mum's always been good yes. with money, haven't you, yes. Mum? You have. Yes. Always got that little bit tucked away here yes. or you'll be looking after yes. the pennies and there. My mum was great yeah, to, to, to impress that. that on me and yeah. teach me. And now your mum's mum was a laundress and so was her mum. So it ran in the family yes. to take washing yes. in. Oh yes. yeah, we'll have to call her Mrs Tiggy Winkle, <laughs> won't we? So there you are in Canterbury Avenue and that's because your granddad... That's because your yes. granddad moved from that horrible Pleasant Grove yes. out a bit. And yes. when he got the job of delivering the oil, and then he became an oil merchant. So yes. as he got better at oh, it, you know, lost yes. his wife and had his... But he had his grown-up yes. daughters living with him, yes. Mum, in the census. Yes. He had, you know, the auntie you yes. love, um, who you used to see who married the war... Um, married the, the banker. That's it. Yes. Was it Harriet? No, that was Auntie May. Aunt, well, that's because her name was yes. Harriet May. Yes. Yeah, so I know her as Harriet, you know her as May. Yes. That's well, that's on the census, Mum, she was a milliner. Oh. That's a good job, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Yes. And she got that job from school. She left school and well, became a milliner. But well. her sisters, uh, Flo and the other sisters that you knew as aunties, yes. they worked in the local biscuit factory oh. packing biscuits so Harriet always seemed to get that you know she had that leg up from yes. the start yes. uh, but she was at home looking after yes. your dad at quite quite a good age whereas your mum had got married yes yeah yes yeah yes. and so in the family we had Henry who was your granddad yes then his dad was Thomas and then his dad was Thomas and his dad was Henry, going back to 1736. Yeah. I've got to do some more research yes. to find out more. But although Henry was born in Somerstown, you know, in that yes. in a bit of London, yes. the rest of them came from South Cerny in Gloucestershire. Oh. Yeah. So you're country bumpkins, yes. Mum. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and to come down to London, wow. Must have really come oh. down for a reason, yes. maybe lack of work yes. or something yes. like that. Yes. And landing up in horrible, you know, being a tallow mill oh. to Pleasant Grove and his wife dying. That was yes. tough for him, wasn't it? And you said that Charles Dickens mentioned the tallow making. Yes, he did, in, yes. In, in, uh, and yes. of course then, in our previous vlogs, you'd come back from the war... And you'd landed back, back in the same area. Yes. Uh, the area that you knew, and that must have been nice for your mum, because yes. that's where she was brought up, and yes. you know, eventually, yes, came from. We 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 ended up in Highbury when we came back. That's it. Yes. yes. Yeah. But your mum wasn't well, was she? No, uh, no, she wasn't well because of all that had happened during the war. Yeah. And. Um, all the travelling and everything that she'd had to do and the changes in in uh, Dad's job and yeah. in the in the docks and all everything. All the stress. Yes, because she had to also cope with life then, with rationing yeah. and everything. Yeah. Talking about rationing, Mum, in the vlog, number 13, last week, I was talking about rabbits. Yes. Uh, myxomatosis. And... I can't, I wouldn't eat a rabbit, I'd never. But you were saying how, yes. Yes, oh golly. I was almost brought up on stewed rabbit. There we are. Yes. Very, very, yes. Yeah, nice, very nutritious, low in yes. fat. And what you were saying when you went to the butchers, they would all be hanging, yes, up, hanging outside. up outside. Yes, yeah. with all the other yeah. legs of lamb yeah. and and beef and everything but, but that was too expensive rabbit. but rabbit yes, was what you but that's right meat was very expensive yeah. and of course um meat was rationed during the yeah. war whereas rabbits were a, a sort of speciality yeah and so if you could get one you were jolly lucky right. or if you knew somebody who had rabbits yes 
Because I think people kept them probably in their back yes. gardens, didn't yes. they, to eat? Yeah. Yes, the same as they did chickens, if they had yeah, a few chickens. chickens yes. Yeah, chickens, yes. Uh, they, were, they were very... Uh, so you remember eating rabbit as a staple yes, part of your diet yes. and then, of course, Mixie coming. So I don't remember rabbit when I was growing up, but maybe you did eat, not wild rabbit, but you ate... We um, did have rabbit, but I believe perhaps if you didn't like it, yeah, you had something different. I had something different, yes. but you and Dad ate yes, it. Yes, yeah. yes. So it's a part of life. Oh, yes. Yeah. It yeah. was either a casserole or, yeah. or in a That's stew. That's I didn't do, cut it up. No. I just put it on the plate. No. Oh, oh, oh. oh, dear. I think that's it. Uh, in fact, you may have eaten it but not realised that maybe. you have it because I may have chopped it all up in tiny pieces. Oh. Yeah, that's exactly right, Mark. Yes. Probably, yeah. So then we come to the sad news that your mum died and yes. that was in 1944, Four. wasn't it? No, 43. No. 43. Yes. So you came back from Scotland in 42. Yes, true, yes. Your mother fell sick. Yes. And there wasn't any NHS in those days. And because so of all the work also that she had to do when we came back, cleaning the offices, offices. and I used to help her with yeah. that after yeah. my work. So yes. in 1943, Mum, you were 17. Yes. So at 17, you lost your mum. Yes. And... Uh, all of what you were going through with the war yes. and, and all that Scotland move and everything, and your dad was beside himself. Yes, because not only had he lost his wife, but yeah. he also didn't know anything about cooking or no. mum had done all that yeah. and had helped. Yeah. And also mum had always managed all the cash. Mm. She used to have this lovely different tins for different... Yeah. Things, which was good for me because I knew all about that and I was able to then help dad with the insurance and things yeah um, but then he lost his job because part of the, his job was my well he didn't really lose his job but he lost where he lived be, he lost where we lived because that part of that yeah. was mum cleaning the offices yeah. and dad helping in the little factory mm. Well, they did keep him on, but we then had to move. I had to yes, move Daddy. again. Yes. In the war. Yes. Losing mum at seventeen. Yes. Old. Yes. But there was a knight in shining armour. There was a knight in shining armour, and that was absolutely fantastic yes. because you met dad in yes. at the beginning of forty. Three? At the beginning of forty, yes. yes. Mum died in the December and right. I met him in about the March or April. Okay. So next time then we'll talk yes. about your time of meeting Dad and what a knight in shining yes. armour he was. Yes. And, um, yeah, and also maybe we'll just talk about your Dad's background as to see why he had such a major breakdown, really. Yes. Obviously why, because he was... He was, you know, yes. of an age, wasn't yes. he, in the war, being sent up, yes. just all of that that we've talked yes. about. But also he'd lost a lot of people in his life. Yes. And losing his wife yes. was just the end yes. as far as he was concerned. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, but he did get over it. Yes, he did. And he did meet another lovely lady yes. who you loved too, didn't Ada. you? Ada, yes. yes. She was so lovely. that was lovely. Yes. So we've got a couple of knights in shining armour coming along in the Certainly. future. Lovely. So lovely. we'll leave it there, Mum, then. Yes. And we've learnt a little bit more about history. And uh, we'll see, see you next see time. See you next time, yeah. yes. Bye-bye. Bye. So thanks, Mum. That was lovely. I do so enjoy spending time with her and reminiscing. In fact, I've got to change the beginning of my book because I think I imagined what she would say when I wrote it, but now I've got the words. So I'm just going to change that beginning chapter uh, to dovetail with what she's told me, and then I might uh, share some with you. So thanks again for the time you've spent. And the little film this week is, well, we went to Goodenstone Park, and we it was just that last well the beginning of October and it just felt like the end and I was sitting on this bench and the sun was out but I was sitting on this bench and there was a weeping willow uh, tree all around me and I just sat there looking through it at this flower bed and it just felt like that was the end 
And it's always a melancholy time for me because I'm a summer girl. I just love that warmth and that sun. But anyway, there I did, and I made a little film of it. It's really like the end of summer. But on the other hand, the beginning of October. So, yeah, if, if this rain can clear off, then it might be nice. So I'm going to go out for a nice walk along the seashore now and uh, just relax. So I hope you can find some relaxation time too. And I'll see you next week. Bye.